Hello, I'm Chris Richmond. In last week's video, I visited a local wind farm to attempt to capture the sound of wind turbines. This week, I continue my audio adventures in the quest for the ultimate swoosh. A few miles away from me is the six turbine installation at Jacks Lane Wind Farm. Installed in 2014, the entire site is surrounded by a network of public lanes and footpaths. But first, I call in at Coxford Abbey Quarry to record a completely different industrial soundscape. Right now, last time I sussed this place out, I was on one of my uh, dog walks and it was a Sunday, so there was no machinery in operation. But uh, today, being a weekday, hopefully we might hear something in action. But then, uh, saying that, it's very quiet down here at the moment. Oh, there's noise, that's a good sign. From a public footpath on the southern edge of the quarry is a vantage point overlooking the massive stone crusher, which is certainly making all manner of noise today. There you go, handy little vantage point right on the site perimeter. Now I think I'm going to move the microphone because standing here you can actually get a really nice echo off those trees. I mean where the mic is at the moment is quite a direct sound on the uh, machinery. But uh, quite a unique perspective from back here so I'm going to try that. Right, so the effect we'll get here is that in the hard left you'll hear the sort of direct sound from the machinery and on the right you'll hear the echo in the pine trees. Now, those high frequencies are really bouncing off those trees. I hope the mic picks that up. Wonderful. Now let's go and record some wind turbines. The turbines at Jack's Lane are turning at a much slower speed than my previous visit, but at least they're turning. Back to that second turbine to find the gap in the hedge. Right, now all we have to do is get well out of the way and listen. And it isn't long before I hear something interesting coming from the top of the turbine. Oh, did you hear that? That's exactly the sort of sound we wanted to capture. Uh, I have a feeling it could be the, the pitch of the blades altering, which means these could be winding down to a stop very soon. But there are no audible signs of the turbines winding down. However, there are signs that the weather is once again about to turn. Oh dear, the satellite picture says we're in for some weather again. I don't think we want to be standing out here too much longer. After already recording for 10 minutes, I decide to quit while I'm ahead and retreat back to the car. Right, the weather's beaten us again, but uh, it's a good job I didn't wait because the turbines are still spinning. So uh, clearly the, uh, the blade pitch was just adjusting rather than uh, having a full shutdown. But we will try and capture that one day. Now, let's go to our next location. Right now, our second location is about half an hour's drive south to the um, former RAF North Pickenham airfield. I've learnt we can actually get a lot closer to one of the turbines there because there's one literally just inside the gate by the roadside. Oh, 
right, I'll just set the microphone up somewhere near the gate and uh, see what happens. Alright, so now we just sit and wait again. At least this time, I can wait in the dry. Well, the wind is definitely dropping. Oh, I've just seen a bat. So busy along this little road, dear, dear. It's only a minor road as well. Cool. Turn your lights down. There are plenty of those to edit out of the recording. Well, there doesn't seem to be uh, any signs that these are going to be turning off. They seem to be remaining at a pretty consistent speed. And with that, I retrieve my gear and call it a night. All right, that's enough recording for one day. Let's go home. With some more interesting sounds captured, let's load them into the PC and see how they've turned out. Now I've loaded the sound files into Reaper, let's see how the recordings have turned out. The first sound is from Coxford Abbey Quarry, with the microphone directly facing the stone crushing equipment. The result is a very harsh sound, but listen closely and you can hear small details in the sound. However, because of the distance away from the machinery, the stereo image is quite narrow. Compare that with the second sound, where the microphone was placed at 90 degrees to the machinery to capture the high frequency echoes in the pine trees. Whilst the sound of the machinery is much quieter, interestingly you can hear undertones from the diesel engines of vehicles. However, because of the narrow angle of the XY mic capsules in my Rode NT4 microphone, the stereo effect of the echoes in the trees isn't reproduced as well as I'd hoped. Now for the wind turbines. At Jack's Lane, I stood 100 metres away from the nearest turbine. The real treat was the sound that I described as the blade pitch adjustment motor actuating. It sounds like more of a friction squeak than a mechanical noise, even more so if we speed it up. None of the other turbines appeared to make this sound, so perhaps there was a maintenance issue with this particular one. Either way, it's an interesting sound to have captured. However, the sounds captured at Pickenham were the most interesting. Being only 50 metres from the nearest turbine, the swoosh is much more pronounced than at 100 metres. But that's not all I discovered throughout this recording. Now, being a bit of a sound enthusiast, I often mess about with the play rate and play through sounds at different speeds. Listen to this recording at Pickenham slowed down to a quarter speed.
Can you hear that ticking noise? It sounds sort of like a metronome and wasn't audible at the time of recording. It's quite concerning as it sounds like there's a fault with the Zoom F6 recorder, but it isn't. Bring the play rate gradually back to normal and the sound becomes ultrasonic and inaudible. The ultrasonic nature of the sound got me thinking about a possible explanation. Remember I said I saw a bat flying about during recording? Oh, I've just seen a bat. It turns out that in certain areas prone to bats, wind turbines are fitted with an array of loudspeakers to deter bats from flying near the spinning blades, which could be fatal. The ultrasonic pulses emitted by these loudspeakers confuse bats by drowning out their calls as they rely on echolocation to navigate their surroundings in flight. Therefore, the bats will automatically choose to fly away from areas where the noise becomes intrusive, reducing the risk of blade collisions. So there we go, an interesting bit of investigation work to finish. It's amazing what you can find out, every day is a school day. And on that note, I hope you've enjoyed following me on this audio adventure. Thanks for watching. Now for the obligatory closing paragraph. If you enjoy following my quirky, if slightly self-indulgent adventures, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This filmmaking love just wouldn't be worth it without the support of watchers like you. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.